Hello, my name is Dr. Ruchir Patel. I'm a fellowship trained board certified sleep medicine physician practicing full-time sleep medicine. In this segment, we're gonna talk about insomnia. Insomnia is probably the most common sleep complaint that a sleep center or sleep physician will hear. Insomnia is a very loose term that refers to three major issues. One, difficulty falling asleep. Two, difficulty staying asleep. Or three, early morning awakening, which would be waking up at two, three, or four o'clock in the morning for an unexplained reason and then having a difficult time returning back to sleep. The way we as sleep physicians would approach a patient's complaint of insomnia is to determine which one of these three factors is it. And then if there's actual reasons why a person could be having a difficult time falling asleep or staying asleep or waking up early in the morning and not being able to get back to sleep. Most often, the difficulty falling asleep component can be related to anxiety disorder or the inability to relax a person's mind when they get into bed. And oftentimes what happens, patients will just lay there thinking about various different things that they could have done, they should have done, or they need to do. But over time, what happens, the brain becomes conditioned to learn that, hey, when we get into bed, we're just gonna lay there and think about things. So before you know it, You've missed that 30 minute opportunity to be able to fall asleep and now it's taking 45 minutes, 60 minutes or even longer. And then of course you get frustrated and that adds more fuel to the fire so to speak and before you know it you're laying awake for half the night trying to get to sleep. The difficulty staying asleep where a person may wake up several times throughout the night could be the result of a conditioned arousal response where the brain has learned to want to wake up or it could be related to a physical sleep disorder such as sleep apnea or a condition where the legs will kick and twitch when sleeping called periodic limb movement disorder or it could be even environmental it could be your spouse's snoring or tossing and turning that's waking you up so that's the way we would approach that one to see is it psychological or is it more physical the early morning awakening component again would fall in the same line as the difficulty staying asleep, is it triggered by a nocturnal sleep disorder or physical condition or is it related to something else? But then often individuals will have a hard time getting back to sleep, which in turn would fall back towards the initial type of uh, insomnia, which is I can't fall asleep, where the brain has learned or it's become conditioned to not want to go back to sleep after you wake up. So those are the three major components of what insomnia is. How is insomnia treated? Medications have been used and prescribed for insomnia for a multitude of years. Ambien, which is probably the most commonly used sleep medication, probably the most popular, has been out probably for about 27 years now. But it turns out we in sleep medicine are actually discouraging patients from starting these medications and we in fact are actually working very hard to wean and discontinue people from taking these medications. The reason being is that about five, six years ago, researchers discovered that our brains contain a sewer system, so to speak, where during deep levels of sleep, it cleans out toxins from the brain that the brain produces from functioning all day long. One particular toxin is involved in Alzheimer's disease. Well, these medications that are used to help people sleep, whether Ambien, Lunesta, Xanax, Clonazepam, Diazepam, or Valium, or even over-the-counter PM drugs like Tylenol PM or Motrin PM, which contain diphenhydramine or Benadryl, these medications prevent the sewer system from actually cleaning this toxin out from the brain. And as a result, there's more and more data and research showing that these medications may increase a person's future risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. So from a medication standpoint, we're actually discouraging individuals from starting medications and in fact trying to help people get off the medication by trying to figure out why are they having insomnia. The most effective treatment option for insomnia is what's called cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia or referred to as CBTI. So this is a very specialized form of cognitive behavioral therapy which is done by clinical psychologists that are specially trained in this form of behavioral therapy that's designed solely to treat insomnia. It's geared towards addressing some of the factors that are involved in perpetuating a person's insomnia, such as laying in bed for hours on end with the brain racing and not being able to relax, or trying to identify behaviors that you may have instituted to help your sleep, but in turn actually are harming your sleep. And then also to remove and address the worry and anxiety that people will develop because they're not sleeping well. 
So cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia is performed by clinical psychologists that are trained in this specific form of behavioral therapy, and it can involve anywhere from two to six sessions, where each session is involved with trying to identify various different factors that are perpetuating your insomnia, but also helping to address the anxiety and the fear of going to sleep. So several studies have shown over the last 20 years, if not longer, that CBT-I is the best and most effective treatment for long-term resolution of insomnia. If you're having insomnia complaints, would highly recommend trying to find a clinical psychologist in your area that is trained in CBT-I or cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia to help address your proper insomnia issues.